thank you, ma'am. <laughs> so to avoid saying wonderful for, for wrong things, um, I'm just going to not show you. So I deliberately cut off the header um, that has the ears. So now let's look at question number five, um, section C. Uh, in most cases, I always say, um, you, you decide, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, to go for what I'm saying or to go the other way. In most cases, I think reading thoroughly um, this particular text might be time consuming because this section is only assessing whether or not we are able to use language correctly. That's all. So here, we need to be very focused in the fact that what is being assessed here is our ability to use language correctly. So please be very careful that um, when we go through this, we, um, again, the sound, again, that, yes, that sound. Guys, someone's mic is acting on us. Because the slightest disturbance is a link setter of um, orange. So the, this section of your paper is working on your language editing skills and your ability to use language correctly. So it is not assessing a comprehension as uh, section A is assessing comprehension. So you cannot run away from reading, uh, from having a close, thorough, a thorough close reading section A. Here you can get away with it because questions directly take you to where the error is and you need to make the corrections. Now, let us move to the reading of our first text. Um, Titanic makes a splash. The Oscar winning, now let's look at the Oscar winning is a compound word. Now, how do we know this? There is a use of a hyphen between the word Oscar and the word winning. For some, someone is on the lobby or in the lobby rather. Um, can we thank you? So, so you need to be able to see whether the word winning is an adjective or it is a noun. So if the word winning is an adjective or the word winning is a noun, then we have a compound uh, noun or a compound adjective. So you've got to be able to, yeah. So we are looking at the word winning. So the word winning is a noun. So in this case, the word Oscar winning is a compound adjective. So you need to be able to know your parts of speech, ladies and gentlemen, in order for you to be able to decipher what exactly it is um, that you're dealing with, especially at uh, the word level. So the Oscar moving, the Oscar winning movie was first screened in cinema 24 years ago. The film is about a fictional romance that takes place around the real tragedy when the passenger liner Titanic struck an iceberg on her maiden voyage 
in 1912. Now, can somebody help and read for me there? Come on, guys. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, Winslet play the past lovers in the film. It was hugely popular around the globe and held the box office record until a decade after its release. As part of the research, director James Cameron undertook several diving expeditions to the wreck of the Titanic and some of this footage is used in the movie. He also had a ship build, which looked exactly like the original, to be used in the film. It cost 200, ooh. 200 million. 200, then uh, about. Oh yeah, 200, dollars, 200 million dollars. Then about 920,000 million to produce Titanic. At the time, it was the most expensive movie produced. Titanic was nominated for 14 Oscars, of which it won 11, including the best film and best director. The theme song, My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion, also won the Oscar with best original song. The movie holds the record for most Oscars. All right, the movie holds the record for most Oscars. Now, we have read the text and now the real challenge begins now 5.1.1 the instruction is to correct the single error in each of the following sentences now ladies and gentlemen please always adhere to instructions your instructions state it clearly that in the correction of the error, you only write down the question numbers as well as the words you have corrected. So do not write sentences here. Write the word, I mean, there's a single error here so that you need to work with. Now let's get to business. Now let's look at the word I mean, the Oscar winning movie was first screened in cinemas 24 years ago. Where is the error here? Uh, Keith? It's supposed to be 24 years, not 24 years ago. That's the error, 24 years ago. And it is quite simple for, uh, for, for I mean, for FAL learners. I mean, I remember when I used to teach FAL, um, learners had to respond to this uh, 5.1 question. Uh, it's always outlined this way. And the learner wrote, there is no error. And, and honestly speaking, if you don't take time to look at your sentences and how they are structured, you would think that there is no error. And yet there is. So in this case, we had an error of number. Now, you could be asked as a home language learner, um, what type of an error this is. So in this case, we are dealing with the error of number. That is whether something is singular or it is plural. So that's the error of number. Now let's look at um, number B. It was hugely popular around the globe and held the box office record until a decade after its release where is the error where's the error
uh, Keith, again, are we going to have you being the only one responding? Guys, again, I'm going to sing out what you said. Guys, I mean, these Should are... Should I give... Guys, I'm going to sing out Angoma. Um, it's ten years. It's ten years. Good. Now, let's move to five point one point three. Then we are getting technical. Rewrite the following sentence in reported speech. James Cameron said. I researched everything about the Titanic. Let's remind ourselves of the, I mean, the rules of changing sentences into reported speech. Again, your reported speech would also mean your, di I mean, indirect, indirect speech. So they might use the word reported speech or indirect speech. The first thing that we lose is the punctuation. You lose your commas and you lose your inverted 
commas to show that you are no longer direct quoting, but now you are reporting. So please be aware, once you rewrite the sentence and you maintain punctuation, then you'll be marked incorrect. Um, Ngoma, are you giving us an answer here? Uh, okay, Keith. Uh, James Cameron said that he had researched everything about the Titanic. He had researched everything about, about the Titanic. That's your three marks, just like that. Again, you don't always need to have all, all that. James Cameron said he had researched everything about the Titanic. Whether you, you maintain that or you don't, it's immaterial. You don't always have to have all that. Okay, so we give you one mark for saying he, because we have changed the pronoun I to he. And then remember, who researched is already in the past. So we need to um, go a tense backwards. Um, in fact, had research. So it's it's it, we're looking at another type of a tense. Had researched, and then everything about the Titanic. So make sure you change your pronouns, and you make changes to your tenses. But first, you need to identify what tense is my sentence in. And then I would know whether I need to go a tense backwards or a tense ahead. So please be careful of your tenses and always make, make sure um, to know them. Now 5.1.4, rewrite the following sentence in the passive voice. The actors gave a good performance. Again, I want us to, uh, okay, you don't have this sentence there. Um, okay, I think I, I might as well have to, because we no longer need anything that is on the text. So let's just uh, project this. Now, so we're rewriting the following sentence in the passive voice. So the actors is our subject. So guys, before you change or rewrite a sentence in the passive voice, here's the first thing that you need to do. You need to first find your subject. So in this case, our subject is the actors. And then gave is our verb. A good performance is our object. So you have your highlighters with you in the exam room. You, you need not be afraid to highlight as much as you can. I mean, this is your working document. So you don't need to think of the fact that the school is asked to use paper afterwards. They asked you to leave the paper. Leave it as dirty as you can with highlighters and underlining and all of these things because you need to analyze sentences before uh, you could start uh, working on them. So this is in active voice, um, the sentence that we're working with. So now, what is the formula? So the formula then for the passive voice, we need to have the object and we keep the verb where the verb is. And then we take the subject to where the object was. I think that's very simple. Subject, verb, object, active. Object, verb, subject is passive. So having identified, guys, don't just rewrite the sentence, otherwise you're gonna lose marks. Do what I've just done here. Underline, um, highlight, and write over. So on top of the actors, I have my S for subject, on top of gave, I have the V 
for um, for verb and a good performance. I have an O. Again, O gave is also in the past. So these are things that I don't have to just overlook. Now, all right. I think let's take Shanice. A good performance. Um, so, your mind is rather low. Shanice? Uh, I cannot hear you. Okay, can I have somebody else, please? Shanice's mic is... Tattoo. Um, so the answer is um a good performance was given by the actors. A good performance was given by the actors. That's good. Now let's go to the next question. Write the underlined symbol as a word. So we have your dollar sign here. So we need, I've already given you the answer there. So in this case, you needed to write it in words and that is dollar. Okay. 5.1.6. Why is the word Titanic written in italics in the passage? Remember three functions of italics for those who are joining us for the first time. So we said italics are used for non-English words in English texts. And then we said italics were used for emphasis. And then finally, they are for titles of songs, books, movies, articles, and so forth and so on. Now, Shanice, what is... The why is the word Titanic written in italics? Okay, Susan. It's the title of the movie in this case. Um, in this case, guys, you need to be very specific as to what title this is. So this speaks about the movie, the Titanic. So you couldn't just say it's the title and you leave it like that. You should be able to be as specific as you can and state that it is a title of a movie. Let's move on to the next question. Now, Rewrite the following sentence in the simple past tense. The movie holds the record for receiving the most Oscar awards. The movie holds. Now, remember, if the sentence is to be written in the simple past, um, we have to look at the fact that, um, in fact, it, yeah, we are read, writing it into the simple past. So it means it's in the simple present. So we need to take it to the simple past. So the movie holds the record for receiving the most Oscar awards. Let's see. Um, uh, Keith. Um, the movie held the record for receiving the most Oscar reward, awards. The, the movie held the records or record for receiving the most Oscar award. Okay. 5.1.8. Give the correct degree of comparison in the following sentence. Titanic was the long movie I have ever watched. Titanic was the long movie I have ever watched. Um, who's, who's in? Uh, Menno? Um, sir, Titanic was the longest movie I have ever watched. 
So we're looking at the longest. All right, thank you. Now, 5.1.9, rewrite the following sentence in the negative form. Now, now, in, in order for me to change a sentence into a negative form, I need to add the word not in front of the verb or before rather, let me not say in front of, but before the verb, that's all. So the Titanic carries 2,240 passengers. Now, if I add the word not only, it's not going to make sense, but I need a modal here. Um, who's giving us an answer here? Uh, Lebuchan, I mean Liban. Okay, Liban, Pumi, Chacho. Uh, 2761, this is a very long uh, number for a name. Can you please give us an answer there? Guys, if, if you, you, are, you are quiet like this, I'm, I'm left not, like I'm left without anything to say. I think I'm not heard by anyone because people are putting up their hands, but they are not responding. Um, uh, say, I'll say uh, the Titanic did not carry 2,240 passengers. Did not? Yes, sir. No, no, it should be does not. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, yeah, it does not carry 2,240 passengers. Now, let's move on to the next um, text, which is text G. Remember, guys, make sure that you do write text G and then the answers beneath that. So make things easy for the marker, um, the one that's going to be marking your paper to know that these answers belong to these set of questions set on this particular uh, text. The Cape Coral Youth Council, in partnership with the Cape Coral Art Center, requests entries for its junior project. Three artists aged between 12 to 18 years old will be selected to design and create three separate paintings to be displayed. The deadline for entries will be announced. Now, 5.2.1. Complete the following tag question. Write down only the missing words. Now, please be careful about boys and girls. When writing question tags, you need to rewrite the sentence as it is. Don't forget your comma and the three dots there, the ellipses, are indicating that something has been omitted. Avoid using the words, um, they indicate that something, something is missing or something more was said. That's, that's rather vague um, for grade 12 learners. We can accept that for grade eight, but you need to be able to say the ellipses have been used to show that there is omission or something has been omitted. So when you write a tag question, you need to rewrite, artists should be 12 to 18 years old. Now, can I also then look at the type of a sentence this is? Artists should be is a positive sentence, positive sentence. So if my sentence is positive, then my tag is going to be negative. Right. I hope that's quite clear. 
Um, I know home language people are, are wondering, but we've never done text, but um, you text are a part of your, your paper. You might find a question tag this year. So if you find it, how are you going to work it out? First things first, you keep the sentence as it is with your comma, and then you add your tag and don't forget the question mark. Again, all tags must be kept as contractions. Don't write didn't, didn't, or didn't, didn't you? No, no, that's a contraction, by the way. Uh, or did you not avoid that? Keep your tags as contractions. Keep. So artists should be 12 to 18 years old, aren't they? Mm -mm. Aunt would not be the correct te uh, tag. Uh, Kumo. Um, artists should be 12 to 18 years old, right? No. Right is more informal. It's colloquial, so it's not going to make it as an answer. Uh, Fusion. Shouldn't they? I mean, should should have given you a clue as to what tag were you supposed to use. Or you could use should they not instead of saying shouldn't they. All right, let's go to 5.2.2. Now, here is the problem. When you combine the following sentences into a single sentence. I mean, by now you should know how, the, uh, what the rules are. So you should understand the artist should be able to design, the artist should be able to create. And you are told to begin the following with the words, not only. Um, Nako. Sir, could you please repeat 5.2.1? Can't you see it? 5.2.1? Yes. Um, it, it shouldn't they. Okay, so thank you so much. Or, or should they not? And you must have a question mark around those particular tags. Um, That's uh, it. Cool. You said we should write them yeah. actions. You said we should write them you know, as contractions. As contractions. In this case, should they not is, is an exception. Okay. Yeah, there are exceptions to the rules. In, in, in most cases. That's why we need to know the rules of the language key. All right, let's move on. Uh, who's giving us the answer for 5.2.2? But uh, Kuma. Remember to uh, begin not with only. not only. Yes, okay. Not mm -hmm. only should the artist be able to design, but the yeah. artist should be able to paint. Yeah. The artist. Oh, that's what I repeat. Repeat, yes. Okay. Not only should the artist be able to design, but the artist should be able to create. Mm -mm. I don't need to repeat, but the artist, but I can, I can say, but also to create. There's something you're missing. Um, you're miss, missing punctuation in your combination of sentences. So not only should the artist be able to design, then I need a comma, but also to create, then full stop. All right, um, do we all understand that one? 
All right. Let's move to the next question. Okay, I think, oh, all right. Uh, let's go to the next uh, presentation here. Uh, all right, here we are. So the question here is to give the singular form. So we've got 14 minutes. So I want us to finish this uh, section and then we're going to end the session and then reconvene for the second and third uh, leg of our presentation. So 14 minutes remaining. Give the singular form of the word in brackets. The deadline for the entries will be announced. Um, let me see. Guys, I can't keep having a repeat of the same people answering questions when we are 21. There's plenty of us in the group or in this meeting. So can we just be as interactive as we can? Because this is all about, uh, about giving you assistance. Let's not have people um, being really, really expected to outshine the rest let's really take a, a, a chance um if you are wrong you're wrong but don't keep quiet try um okay um but Ruben, let me see okay i still see the same names uh, Ngoma? um the singular form is entry is entry very good now 5.2.4 study the following sentence children have to compete against each other to see who will be the best state the part of speech of each of the underlined words as used in the sentence uh keith The children is a noun. Uh, mm -hmm. Complete is a verb. Complete, not complete. Oh, compete. Okay, yes. Complete is a verb and children is a noun, but it, it can also be a common noun. It can also be yeah. a common noun. All right. All right, let's do this. I want us to end our session and then we'll reconvene in the next next few seconds um after i reset the the what you call it, the link so we could be able to reconvene please come back as soon as you can it's nine o'clock at least by half past nine we should be done guys ne? because these questions are not as demanding as we have seen with the uh what you call it with the comprehension yesterday okay let's end the session and then we'll reconvene immediately
Okay, let's. Okay, I think. Yeah, I think we may start. The rest will find us by the way. Okay. Now, let's look at text number G, the experience of boredom. Um, okay, let me check. One, are you able to all hear me? And two, you're able to see what's on the screen. Great. Keith, does that also apply to you? <laughs> Can you see? Yes. All right. Now, American researchers just published what they are calling the most all-inclusive, again, we have a compound word here, which we must decide whether or not it is compound or, or, or I mean, uh, it's a compound adjective or compound noun. Now, comprehensive empirical account of the experience of boredom over conduct, I mean, ever conducted that solve the mystery of what causes boredom. And then we have a colon. So in this case, a colon is introducing, it, it introduces a list that's coming. So people feel bored, they concluded. Now we have the use of a double comma for additional information purposes in this case. When they're doing things, I mean, boring things, which is a less boring finding than it means since it puts paid to one of the favorite admonishments of teachers and parents. There are no boring things, only boring people. Or as G.K. Chesterton said, there is no uninteresting subject. Then we have a semicolon there. The only thing that can exist is an uninterested person. But of course, there are boring things. Think of completing your text return, learning PowerPoint and attending safety seminars that involve dull interactions. Boredom feels more intolerable these days because there's so much stimulation to be had. Your forebears were prisoners of mundane tasks. They wrote with pens and they did addition. In contrast, then there's a comma. We are free to choose more exciting lives with access to real-time feedback on social media. No wonder then that more meaningful things such as reading books, communicating with people you love, start to feel boring. Consider stepping away from time-sucking digital addictions. It will make the rest of your life more interesting. Great. I guess it beg again, Manji. Correct the error of tense in line one. Let's go to line one. American researchers just published what they are calling the most inclusive blah, blah, blah. Let's see who's giving us an answer. Uh, Kumo. Okay, let me try, sir. Um, American researchers Publish what they uh, think, what, what they are calling the most all inclusive, comprehensive, etc. Yeah. You only removed it just, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, but that, that doesn't change the tense. <laughs> okay. Doesn't uh, change the tense. Palisa? American researchers just published what they call, um, what they called, uh, calling to call, sir. Wait, wait. You are going to the same direction, in the same direction with the with the last speaker, Okom. Guys, you need to first check where the error of tense is. So the tense error here is with the word published. 
now let's work on fixing that let's see whose hand is up uh, michael amugelani keith uh one of you can say something yeah who's giving us an answer there uh, Tibato, please so can I try? Disable your camera, please. Yeah, I'm Gillan. American researchers have just published what they calling the most all inclusive wara wara wara. Just, just leave it there. Have published is what I'm looking for. All have just published. That's all. All right, let's move to the next question. Remove the tautology in lines one to three. Now, um, remember guys, as teachers, we, we also learn a lot of things every day as we go along. Now, I needed to pay careful attention to this because for a, 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 a while I've been saying it in a quite different way. So, <clears throat> I need to change what I had said prior. Now, Keith, I know you'd want to chow me over this, but uh, unfortunately you'll have to listen to the new strategy I'm giving. The last time I had said to you, you need to rewrite the sentence and you don't add the word that you have removed. When I speak to colleagues uh, who are seasoned and who have been marking for years more than I, they advise that you don't have to rewrite the whole sentence. You just write the word remove and then colon and you write the word that you would have removed. Just please show me with a thumbs up if you do understand what I'm saying. All right. Instead of writing the whole sentence and you exclude a word, do not rewrite a whole sentence anymore. Just write because the instruction for you was remove the tautology in lines one and three. So you find tautology where tautology is, and then you decide which word are you going to remove. And the word you remove is the one you're going to write on your script to say, remove this word. And then that's how your stuff is going to be very clear for the marker. Now let's go back to lines one to three. Remember when line references are given, make time to read. Go back to those lines. American researchers just published um, what they are calling the most all-inclusive, comprehensive empirical account of the experience of boredom. So there are particular words which are repeated, which mean the same thing. So what are these words? Let's first identify the words and then we decide which one to remove. Um, I think I'm just going to start calling people by name. Uh, okay, Sam Tanda. Okay, um, so I'm not sure. I think it's comprehensive and empirical. Mm -mm. Comprehensive is correct, but the other word is incorrect. Which other word that um, means the same thing as comprehensive? All inclusive. Yeah. All inclusive. All inclusive. So. Now that we've identified the two words, we just write remove and then I write comprehensive or remove all inclusive. Says one of the guys, all right, thank you. Now let's go to 5.3 for two marks, then it gets heavy. Now remember, this is a home language paper now. Differentiate between the use of a colon in line four and in line seven. Let's go there. Line number four, they've solved the mystery of what causes boredom. And there's a column. 
people feel bored, they they concluded, um, when they are doing boring things, which is a less boring finding than it seems, comma, since it puts paid um, to one of the favorite astonishments, I mean, admonishments of teachers and parents. Then again, there's a corner. There are no boring things, only boring people. So two functions of a column, which are of a differing nature. So here, you must show the difference of a use of a colon in line four, as well as in line number seven. What are the differences here? Guys, I think I, I was very clear in my explanation as I was going through the text. Now you are dragging. And remember, we need to rest. Some of us, we need to finish the day and go to bed. What are the two different ways? Okay, Kumo. Okay, so let me, let me attempt. Uh, the first colon in line four, is to give more information. All right. Okay. And then the one in line seven is to <laughs> join two sentences. Not at all. The, the first part is correct, but please avoid saying to give more information. You'd say the colon in line four indicates that more information is to follow. Is that clear, Kumo? All right. Okay, can somebody give us the second function of the colon? What was it used for? Okay, let's go back to line seven. Um, okay, Key. Say, so, to show that I listed about four. A what? A list. Not in this case, not in this case, um, not in this case. Uh, names? So I, I think that it's used when a person is talking, because then we have, um, I think, is it inverted commas after that, and then the person speaks and then closed inverted commas. You've just answered it like a fun lane. Now, please <laughs> contextualize, it, contextualize it to home language. It is to introduce direct speech. Oh, okay. Yes, that is direct right? speech. Yes, sir. Or it introduce a quotation. But in this case, it's not just a quotation. It is a, a direct speech words as said by someone. All right, let's continue. Uh, guys, you need to pay careful attention to small and yana details that are in your text so that you are able to provide the particular answers that you are asked for. 5.4. The only thing that can exist is an uninterested person. Let's go to um uh okay. Yeah, I think I think we do have the line. So it's 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 enough. Explain how the change in prefix from un to in trusted to dis in disinterested change the meaning of the sentence. So here you're looking at what does it mean to be uninterested and what does it mean to be disinterested so you need to know your prefixes very well to know when do we use the word un and when do we use i mean when do we use the prefix un and when do we use the prefix dis so what does uninterested mean if, if i say i'm uninterested uh, names
I forgot to raise my hand, to lower my hand, but okay, let oh, me, oh. let me try to, I only know one, the one for uninterested, like mm. it's when you show like, um, completely no interest in, in sort of particular things or. All right, so um, yeah, no interested, interest, not sure. You're not interested and also you are of a negative attitude. And therefore, if you are disinterested, it means you are unbiased and you are neutral. So guys, you need to know your, your prefixes and suffixes, guys. That, that That's one thing I forgot to um, raise the last time when I gave you that whole list, uh, which Keith had a problem to say, are we supposed to know all of these things? And I said, yes, and I could pick up people with, with were fearing for their lives because they were realizing some of the things were unknown. So prefixes and suffixes are also a part of this section and they are a part of things that you need to know. All right, let's move to 5.5. Think of completing your text return, learning PowerPoint and attending safety seminars. Can somebody help me with the lobby? safety seminars that involves dial interactions that's lines 9 to 11. 5.5.1 identify the part of speech of the underlined words do you see now the similarities between your file paper and your home language paper now we are dealing with parts of speech we've dealt with parts of speech um previously so 5.1.5 the word safety what part of speech is it Come on, guys. Uh, Kumo? It's a noun, sir. No. It can be. Amugelan? It's an adjective. It's an adjective. That's what we are looking for. Now, let's call uh let's correct grammatical error in this sentence so there's an error here think of completing your text return learning powerpoint and attending safety seminars that involves dull interactions so the error that we have here is a concord error Let's fix it. Uh, CM Tanda. Think turns to thinking. No. Remember, the, the, the way you've answered CM Tanda, you're not showing that you looked at your sentence. Remember. If I deal with, con I mean, with, with, with concord, I need to have my subject, my verb, and my object. So I need to look at the number of my subject. And I said number deals with either something is plural or singular. So for a plural subject, I'm going to need a plural verb. So plural subjects will always have an S and the plural verbs will not. So something is not properly written and therefore we need to lose that particular error and then correct it. Amgela. Uh, involves become involve. Involves become involve that's the error now in this case um we have a a rather different sentence i mean think of competing your text return is not a subject but in this case learning powerpoint now we have a dangling participle here um we don't usually start sentences with learning blah blah but Already, since this is picked up from a particular sentence, it, it is correct. It's not dangling. So learning PowerPoint, uh, learning PowerPoint would be uh, an attending safety. So this is my compound subject, uh, safety seminars. That then involves becomes my subject, 
digital interactions become uh, my object. So here I should have looked at what my subject is and asked myself if it was singular or plural, and then I dealt with the verb. Um, which needs to lose an S in order to make it involve instead of involves. All right. 5.6, correct the mother proposition in paragraph three. Let's go to paragraph three. Uh, the proposition is not a question to expect um, in a file paper. So if file people are still with us in the sec uh, session, uh, don't worry about malapropism. It is not going to be assessed. It's only assessed in, um, in English home language. I haven't seen malapropism for the years I've taught IFAL. I uh, haven't seen it in the file paper. So you don't have to worry about that. So here we're looking at boredom feels intolerable these days because there's so much situation to be had. Your forebears were prisoners of mundane tasks. They wrote with pens and they did additions. In contrast, we are free to choose more exciting lives, access to real-time feedback on social media. No wonder then the more meaningful things, reading books, communicating with them, uh, communicating with people you love, start to feel boring. Consider stepping away from the time-sucking digital addiction. It will make the rest of your life more interesting. So there is a malapropism issue. Where is the word that gives us a malaprop? Come class. Uh, Keith. Can I try, sir? Mm. Sir, isn't it four bears? No. Four bears is correct. It's correctly used. Uh, Kumo. Excess, sir. It's the excess. word excess. We needed to use what word? Access. Access. That's the correct word. So the incorrectly used word was the word excess. So, but in contrast, we are free to choose more exciting lives with access to real time feedback on social media instead of saying, uh, exciting lives with access to real-time feedback on social media. Now, 5.7, replace it in line 18 with an appropriate noun or a noun phrase. Let's go to line number 18. So that's 15, 16, 17, 18. It will make the rest of your life more interesting. Here, here, here's the problem. Need to really get much. I'm such a bad. Call you over Kulume. Um, come on, guys. Let's not think too much, or let's not take a long time to think. All right, Mamelani. Okay, Kumo. Sir, that I don't know, but can you say uh, this will make the rest of your life more interesting? This, but not just this, but we are looking at a change that's taking place here. So it would be this change will make the rest of your life more interesting. Or, okay. this, or this step will make the rest of your life more interesting. All right. Let's move to the last uh, 
paper and then we'll call it a night uh okay the experience of boredom has been completed okay here's the one listen up is our next text excellent listening skills are as necessary for effective communication if not more than speaking skills in this age of rapid response communication it is nearly impossible to add something of value to a discussion or carry a conversation forward without listening actively and enthusiastically people with poor listening skill that is who fail to make an attempt to improve will not be tolerated for long listening is a crucial social skill because it shows respect for the other person involved in the conversation not only is it important to speak considerably and kindly to everyone but also to listen attentively to what they have to say people often say we are unsure i mean we are unsure and we do not know what to think this is often disconcerting a lack of listening skills impact